Okay, so welcome to this next video on nitric oxide synthesis. So, so far in this pathway of creating nitric oxide, we have managed to create NG hydroxy L arginine, which means that off that guanadino uh, nitrogen, you have this hydroxyl group. So, I've turned over the page and I'm now going to um, uh, redraw out this um, NG hydroxy L arginine quickly. So, here are these three methylene groups here, coming off as the R group of our arginine amino acid. Okay. Then you have this nitrogen next, with a hydrogen off it. A carbon here with an amino group up here. And then you have the guanadino nitrogen here. And then off this, you have a hydroxyl group. So this is NG for guanadino nitrogen hydroxy, because you've got a hydroxy group off this, uh, guanadino nitrogen, and then it's L-arginine apart from that, so that's the basis for its name, NG-hydroxy L-arginine. Right, okay, so the next reaction that's going to happen is we are going to convert this NG-hydroxy L-arginine into a molecule known as L-citrulline. Okay, and in order to perform this conversion, we're going to have to put in half a molecule of reduced NADP, okay? So what do I mean by that? So you remember me telling you that a nicotinamine, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide um, phosphate uh, carries two hydrogen atoms. So it has the proton and the electron. The proton and the electron. I mean just put one of these in now. So only put one hydrogen atom in, one proton and one electron. That's what I mean by uh, we're going to use half of NADPH. So indeed, you're going to come out with a half reduced molecule of NADPH. Okay, so I should probably denote it. We put in a full molecule and we get out half a molecule, or maybe we put in half a molecule and we get out a an oxidized molecule, either way. Okay, the point is that you're only providing uh, a single uh, hydrogen atom into this reaction. And again, the other thing you're going to stick in is an oxygen molecule, again, so you're going to put in another oxygen molecule. Okay, now, let me show you what you're going to get out of this. So, uh, you're going to get this uh, amino acid, L-citrulline, firstly, okay? So, um, here we are. It's not an amino acid that is used in uh, proteins, but it is still an amino acid because it's got the amine group and the acid group here, okay? And the first part of it is very similar to L-arginine. So, you have these methylene groups, so nothing's changed yet. So these three methylene groups here, then this next nitrogen is exactly the same, and then the carbon here with still that amino group off, but now this guanadino nitrogen has gone, and instead you've got a double bond with oxygen. Right, okay, so one of these oxygens here has basically been, so what you've done is cut this oxygen molecule in two. So you've now got two oxygen atoms. And now what you've done also is cut this double bond here between this carbon and the nitrogen. So this carbon now has two free electrons, which it wants to give to something. And we're going to double bond it with this oxygen, which also has two free electrons. So that's what we've done so far. Now, uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this guanadino nitrogen with its hydroxyl group. We're going to cut off this proton off the end. And we're then going to form a double bond between the nitrogen and that oxygen. So we're going to get nitrogen double bonded to oxygen, which is nitric oxide. But you'll notice that this nitrogen now only has two bonds. So one of its electrons is still on its own, basically. When you cut this double bond here, it had two free electrons that were in um, shells, but orbitals by themselves. Okay, uh, one of them has now gone into this double bond with oxygen, but one of them is still on its own. That makes nitric oxide a free radical, an extremely reactive chemical species, because electrons do not like being on their own in orbitals. Okay, right. Now, what else needs to happen? Because we've given up this hydrogen, 
we've got a hydrogen atom from here, and we've also got this one remaining oxygen. Well, now it's obvious what's going to happen. You're going to make a water molecule. So you combine the remaining oxygen atom with this free hydrogen atom, because remember, we cleave this bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen, creating a hydrogen atom, basically, a proton with an electron. We didn't nick the proton off this, so we didn't nick the electron off this proton. It's, we created a hydrogen atom here, and we got this other hydrogen atom from the half... Um, reduced NADP molecule, and we've combined those together to make water. Okay, so that is the overall reaction now complete. We've created this molecule, which is a molecule, molecule of L-citrulline, which you'll notice has this sort of amide-like group here. It's almost like a double amide because this carbonyl group is bonded to nitrogens on both sides. And uh, then we've created water and we've created our nitric oxide. So now if we look at the whole reaction as a whole, what we took in was we took in a molecule of L-arginine, okay? We also took in two molecules of oxygen, so one in each of the two conversions. Then we took in one and a half, or three halves, reduced NADPH, oh sorry, NADPH. So, well, reduced NADP. So, um, that provided free, uh, free hydrogen atoms, effectively. Okay? And then what we produced out of that was obviously free... Well, we, I, won't put the, um, I won't put the NADP on the other side, because it'll just look messy. I can't put three and a half NADP back again. Uh, so, that basically means we put in free hydrogen atoms free hydrogen atoms, so free hydrogen nuclei with their electrons, so free protons and free electrons, okay? Right, uh, and out what we get is we get a molecule of L-citrulline, we get a molecule of nitric oxide, this free radical, and we also get two molecules of water. Okay, so that's the conversion overall, and that's the reaction that our nitric oxide synthase enzymes are catalyzing and how they produce nitric oxide.